Christine Horn, and welcome to another episode of Sunday Stories. Thank you for stopping by my channel today and hanging out with me on this beautiful Sunday morning. Um, be sure to subscribe to this channel if you're not already and turn the notifications on, turn that little bell on so you get notified. So, you know, before I started gracing your screens on different networks and doing different TV shows and doing Broadway and touring, I first had to get trained. And my life changed forever when I moved to Atlanta, Georgia. But how I got there is uh, a little bit of an interesting story. <laughs> So, as, as I told you before, I always wanted to perform. My mom always put me in uh, dance classes. I took tap, I took jazz, I took ballet. Um, you know, I just, anything to stay busy. Um, because I loved it. It wasn't like she forced me to take the classes. I wanted to do this stuff. I wanted to be involved and create. But um, there was one summer, here's where the okie doke happened. So it wasn't even summer. It was like, my mom reminded me it was Easter and we were supposed to take a vacation to go visit a friend, a friend's brother in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, but something happened where the friend's brother wasn't in town for some reason. And we, my mom or could it was not going to be there, but my mother was like, let's just go anyway. We already have the, the, uh, vacation planned. We'll go. No problem. Sure, we'll go to the South. <laughs> in New York growing up, we didn't say like Georgia, North Carolina. So no, it was just the South. Blanket area. Um, so we go, me, my brother Christopher, um, at the time, I wanna say he was like maybe two, may I think ish. I'm sure my mother will correct me. And she was three months pregnant um with my sister, Crystal. And we go on this vacation and look, my mother has always loved to look at houses. Like, I think she also gets that from like her, her, her stepdad, because they would always look at houses in Long Island on the weekends and things like that. So it was no weird thing to me that my mother wanted to look at houses during our trip to Atlanta. We stayed in Decatur, Georgia, actually, at the time. Um, we connected with one of my um, cousins on my dad's side. Um, and, you know, we all of a sudden we were looking at houses we were being picked up by some person taking us around and my mother's like do you like oh this is a nice house I'm like yeah whatever I'm just indulging my mother okay I'm a teenager I'm like 13 14 years old I clearly I don't desire to go look at houses but whatever like I have a say so so we're looking at houses all these houses and we're looking at a lot of houses okay still not thinking nothing of it we stay in a hotel um, off Wesley Chapel. One thing my mother, we were like, we don't want to, we couldn't live here. This traffic is crazy. And one day, I never, one of the days my mother, I never forget, she asked me, she said, could you see yourself living here? Like not in this specific, specific house necessarily, but like in Georgia. And I was like, yeah, it's nice. It's cool. I can live here. Sure. You know, like whatever. <laughs> Cause you know, growing up in the Bronx in an apartment building, the fact that there were trees and, and I mean, as long as there's not trees in New York, but just yards and, and big houses and, you know, it, you know, space and just a different type of flow. It was interesting. So that's all she wrote. Next thing I know, we, it was like two weeks later, it was something crazy. It was in the middle of the summer. All of a sudden, my mother makes the announcement to me that she bought one of those houses that we were looking at in the South and that we were moving to Georgia, to, to, to Georgia. When I tell you, I was like, say what now? And not only did we, were we, were we moving? It was like within two weeks. It was something like, something ridiculous so it wasn't right after that right so it wasn't like because i was in like easter so I'm, this was like toward the summer so time was passed my mom's belly is much bigger now but she gave me zero notice i was not involved in anything no decision i mean i'm a kid like what decisions am i really involved in she i felt like she got the okay when i was like yeah i can live here not knowing y'all she told me two weeks notice in the middle of the summer we start packing up the place I barely even had time to say goodbye to my friends. 
I was just mortified. We ended up moving to College Park, Georgia with crickets, locusts, quiet. Keep in mind, we lived in the Bronx across from a gas station where they'd be on the thing all in the, time, all in the middle of the night. <laughs> Our Lady of Mercy Hospital was down the street. Like there was a fire station nearby. I'm used to the bustle and the sound of New York where I grew up. And we moved to the South with crickets. <laughs> in the middle of the summer. So now I'm a teenager in the South. In the middle of the summer, I know zero people, no one. It is just me. It is just, it was just us. And it was just, I mean, there's so many stories to Georgia, but you know, I'm not going to, my mother writes about all of them in her book. <laughs> um, but it was such a shell shock moment. I was so mad. My mom, you know, we joke about it now, but I was depressed. I was lonely, but the here's where the silver lining came. My mother wasn't just being selfish because she just wanted a house. You know, she we talked about it and she was like, I just didn't want to raise any more kids in New York. And she said, I saw the friends you were, kind of, you were having, you know, getting pregnant young and kind of headed down the wrong path. And she said, I saw you have potential, but it wasn't being harnessed. And so what my mother did that I didn't know until we moved, she made sure she moved into the school district of one of the top performing arts magnet programs in Atlanta. And that would, and that is Tri-Cities High School. Tri-Cities High School. That is a school that changed my life. That's where I met friends that I still have to this day. Tri-Cities High School in East Point, Georgia, where Candy Burris went from Real Housewives of Atlanta, Keenan Thompson, Outkast, TLC. I mean, you name it. Some of the best of the best have come out of that school, including me. <laughs> and... Uh, in hindsight, oh my God, it was the best move my mother could have made. And I know it was difficult and I know it was probably hard to see her daughter be lonely and depressed, but as soon as school started, <laughs> you know, the rest was history. I got to take performing arts classes, like, cause in New York, I went to uh, Truman High School for one year in ninth grade in Co-op City. Um, but the school did not, my mother would not let me go to LaGuardia. I wanted to go to the fame school, but she was worried about me on the trains and falling asleep because I used to not be so so focused back then. So, you know, Truman didn't have, I ran track and I took band. You know, in school they were like, um, I think in like third or fourth grade, they were like, you can take typing or band. I'm like, uh, band? Who's gonna take typing? Ugh. <laughs> So I played the flute for many years until I shifted into acting and I just dropped that flute like a bad habit just because I was like, deuces flute. Um, though I did enjoy playing it. I really wanted to play trumpet only because a boy that I liked played trumpet. My mother was like, no, your, your cheeks are going to get all big. <laughs> anyway, so being at Tri-Cities High School is where I met the infamous I mean, the man that also helped to form and shape me as an artist, Mr. Freddie Hendricks. Through him, I joined, um, at the time it was called the Freddie Hendricks Youth Ensemble of Atlanta. Now it's called Youth Ensemble of Atlanta. But, and I've met so many lifelong friends. I started performing professionally when I was like 16 with the youth company, traveling all over and performing outside of doing one act plays and all kinds of, um, shows at Tri-Cities High School. I was on the film team. I wrote for the newspaper. I wrote for the local city newspaper called Vox in Atlanta. Like I was so just into everything. Y'all in high school, I wrote, produced, directed, and starred in my own soap opera called Life Goes On. My mother still has the VHS tapes of this, but like that's just always been in me. And so, you know, as an adult now, I, I can imagine how difficult that was, but, um, I'm so grateful, but it was really just a jolt. And it's so funny because now Atlanta feels more like home than New York does because it's just been so long. And I feel like that was where my coming of age happened in Atlanta. And like I said, the friends that I made there are, have been lifelong friends and the experiences and just having the space to, to grow and thrive and see another way of life. You know, it takes guts to be the first one in your family to do something, the first one to move, the first one to, you know, travel or get a degree or whatever your first thing is. Um, and for me, that's kind of where I am in life now, striving to 
reach my own set of firsts and, and, and make new memories and my own leave my own legacy behind. So yeah, that was that story. If you have any questions, I've been loving the questions in the comments below already. Um, this Sunday Stories is a chance for me to just really give you more insight. My mother has been such a great help. Thank you, Mom. She's been sending me pictures. My mother keeps amazing notes and pictures. So getting to share these with you and taking you back into some of my journey is really fun. So if you have a specific question, let me know and I'll uh, consider talking about it on the next Sunday Stories. All right. Thank you for watching. Again, subscribe, turn on notifications so you don't miss the next video. I will see you next week. Have a great day. Stay safe. Um, yeah, I'll see you soon. Bye.